Hello everyone, I'm Arima Khanam and welcome back to Balaji Online Classes. Today I'm here to teach you lesson number 10 and 17. Yes, you must be thinking why 10 and 17 and where are the other chapters in between. I'm not skipping those chapters. I have also made video for those chapters. But I have thought to make a single video for these two chapters because they are interconnected. I'm going to teach you about clauses in the 10th chapter and we'll be studying the uh, relative clause in the 17th uh, chapter so I thought to make a single video because it is one of a part of subordinate clause so we'll be studying it together with in this video in a single video so let's proceed in this uh, video we'll be studying about uh, the group of word a clause how the clause is formed and about the main clause and subordinate clause we'll be studying uh, and we'll be studying about the different types of subordinate clauses that is uh, and their functions also we'll study that is the noun clause we'll be studying about the adverb clause and the last one i'll teach you adjective clause also called relative clause which is the 17th chapter we'll be studying about the main clause and subordinate clause we'll be studying about the formation and function of relative clause We'll be studying about relative pronouns and adjective verbs, adverbs. We'll be studying about defining and non-defining uh, uh, relative clauses and the punctuation rules for sentences with relative clauses. So these are the things we'll be studying in this. So without further ado, let's dig in. Let's know what are clauses. We know that clause is a group of words which form a part of a sentence. It does not impart or gives any meaning if written alone and which contains a subject and a predicate the predicate may be single definite sorry single finite verb you all know what are finite verbs which are controlled by persons numbers and tenses or it may be a set of words which contains a finite verb for example birds sing i have a remote controlled robot so a clause needs to have a finite verb look at these sentences he writes a poem every day finite verb is writes they took the chair out into the garden uh, finite verb is took finite verb carry tense and change according to a person number given below is a list of finite and non-finite verbs uh, we have studied about these uh, verbs that are those are uh, finite and non-finite finite are of two types that is uh, present tense forms and past tense forms and non-finite are also two types that is two uh, infinitive and uh, bare infinitive and the ing form that is the present participle gerund and the past participle okay so these are the different types of finite and non-finite and uh, let's know what are clauses main clause and subordinate clause what is a main clause and what is a subordinate clause we will study in this the main clauses i'll read some examples first look at these uh, sentences i trust him because he always keeps his words my daughter loves pasta which she eats every day let's identify the subject and finite verb in these sentences you can find out what are finite verbs and what are uh, what is the subject in a sentence in the first sentence the subject I is followed by the verb trust and later the subject he is followed by the verb keeps in the next sentence the uh, subject my daughter is followed by the verb loves and later we have the subject she follow uh, followed by the verb eats each of these sentences contains two subjects and two finite verbs therefore each sentence has two clauses so dono uh, sentences may दो सब्जेक्ट हैं, दो वर्ब्स हैं, तो इसका मतलब है, the sentence has two clauses, one is the main clause, the other one is the subordinate clause. So I trust him because he always keeps his mind. One and two part. We are dividing them into two part. That is on page number six seventy six. You can see my daughter loves pasta. One clause and the other one is which she eats every day. The first clause in each sentence makes complete sense on its own and can be used in, uh, as an independent clause. Clauses which make complete sense on their own are known as main clauses. So, clauses which can be written alone and which are not dependent on other clauses 
to complete their meaning our main clause and clauses which are which cannot be written independently and are dependent on the main clause are called the subordinate clause so let's know what are subordinate clause and their classification subordinate clauses include uh, a finite verb and but do not make complete sense on their own as they cannot be written alone uh, in a sentence they need uh, a main a clause to be written with them then only they'll complete their meaning that's why they are called subordinate clause uh, we'll be studying about the different types of subordinate clause the first one is the noun clause uh, <clears throat> look at these examples she expected a prize she expects that she will get a prize in the first sentence the word prize is a noun and is the subject of the verb expects in the second sentence the noun is replaced replaced with the subordinate clause that she will get a prize is the object of the verb expects and does the work of a noun a noun clause is a subordinate clause which contains a subject and a predicate and does the work of a noun so noun clause contains the subject and the predicate and it completes the meaning that's why it is called it and it does the work of a noun so it is called a noun clause now we'll study the next portion is actually adjective clause but i'll teach you adjective clause that is also called relative clause at the end i'll teach you about adverb clauses what is adverb clause i'll read uh, examples and then i'll explain you my family arrived uh, promptly my family arrived before it started raining in the first sentence the verb arrived is modified by an adverb promptly okay so we are telling more about the verb arrived and we are using adverb for that promptly in the second sentence the clause before it started raining does the work of an adverb and it is adverbial clause so we are defining we are elaborating the adverbial so it is an adverbial clause now let's come to uh, adjective clause also called relative clause i'll read an example the new coat is in the car so what is the adjective here new the coat which i bought yesterday so we are describing the coat we are using a phrase there a clause there for an adjective uh, so it is an adjective clause or relative clause the coat which i bought yesterday is in the car so this is adjective clause as we are elaborating we are writing a clause instead of using one word to describe the coat so that is uh, the relative clause or the adjective clause now we will study about uh, relative pronouns and relative adverbs relative cause, uh, clause are introduced by the relative pronouns who who whose which and that a relative pronoun is also called so because it relates a describing clause to its independent antecedent in the main clause the antecedent of a relative pronoun is usually a noun so antecedent used in a sentence is actually a noun i'll read some example rita who is my boss is very considerate relative pronoun is who and antecedent is rita because she is noun this is the house that jack built relative pronoun is that and antecedent is the house the subject okay the thing the lucky coin which maya lost has been found relative pronoun is which and the antecedent is coin the next thing is defining relative clause we know that a relative clause are the subordinate clause that gives additional information about a noun or an idea in the main clause if the information uh, given is essential to the meaning of the sentence we call it a defining or restrictive relative clause a boy who eats too much pizza will become fat a cobbler is a person who repairs shoes if we say a boy will become fat the sentence appears incomplete or absurd okay if you are writing without um, too much uh, pizza i mean we are uh, skipping few words in between so it is incomplete now however when we add the relative clause who eats too much pizza it becomes clear that when a boy eats too much pizza uh, he becomes fat similarly the information given by the relative clause who repairs shoes defines the cobbler so that's it in this portion and next is the non defining relative clause 
a relative clause is a non essential when it does not define its antecedent antecedent the noun but only gives additional information about it such relative clause are called non defining so we are just giving information about the noun so they are called non defining uh, relative clause like surbi who works in mangalore was my student this bus which is fairly regular uh, goes to the red fort if we remove the relative clause from the sentence these sentences they will be uh, they'll still make sense if we are removing the relative clause tabhi wo sensible honge jaise ki surbi was my student we are not defining the noun the antecedent but we are writing it without that we are writing surbi was my student so it is making sense and it is correct this bus goes to the red fort so this is also right now come to punctuation in relative clause how do you punctuate the relative clause defining relative clause are not separated from the rest of the sentence or by commas i remember the old banyan tree that grew in the park the relative clause in this sentence is a defining relative clause we know that uh, we know which banyan tree is being referred to because of the information given that it grew in the park so we know uh, which uh, banyan tree we are talking about because it is already described that is in the park we cannot write i remember the old banyan tree that grew in the park so we are already are uh, telling more about the noun the antecedent so we don't have to use any article for that more examples are there you can read those examples and that's it in these lessons uh, i hope you must have understood it very well agar main aap logo ke liye single alag alag videos banati to maybe you would have not understood it well to maine socha in dono ko ek sath karke main aapke liye single video bana do so that you will understand it better and uh, I'm not skipping any of the lessons in between. I have already made the videos. Maybe it is uploaded also. You can go and uh, check on our channel and uh, take care of yourself and do all the exercises. After downloading it from School Mitra, do it very nicely. Read the lesson first of all. Read all the rules which are to be followed in these lessons, and then do your exercises after downloading it. And uh, take care of yourself. Stay at home and be healthy. Eat healthy. and wait for my next video bye bye